In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to make calculations of what happens at optical wavelengths by knowing the transparency wavelength, lambda p, which is related to the plasma frequency of metals. So our first example is when we are told what the plasma wavelength is. So that's given. And we want to know at some lambda, that's an optical frequency, what is the penetration? What is the 1 over E, what we call skin depth, for instance? So what we do is we invoke the model of how refractive index is related to the plasma frequency and the optical frequency. And in the collision-free regime, the assertion is that the refractive index is equal to 1 minus one way we write it is the plasma frequency over the optical frequency squared. And another way, the ratio of the frequencies is the f inverse of the ratio of the wavelengths. And since we're more often thinking in terms of wavelength, this is an important second way to write that expression. Now. In the situations where lambda and lambda p are not that similar to each other, it's often the case that we can neglect that one and just say that this ratio is giving us n squared. So this is going to be the case when the plasma frequency, which is usually deep in the ultraviolet, like typically about 100 nanometers, any optical frequency which 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers in the visible, for instance, this ratio, when squared, is significantly bigger than 1. So you can almost neglect the 1. So we now have that n squared is equal to this ratio squared. So that immediately tells us that n is approximately equal to i times the ratio with no square. And the way we often write n is equal to n real plus i times n imaginary. So n imaginary itself is a real quantity. So therefore, we would say n imaginary under this approximation is simply this ratio. And we are making an important assumption here, which is that we're going to neglect the magnitude of any magnitude of n real. We're going to assume that the full refractive index of this metal in this simple model is only given by this imaginary component. We have no way, if we're given lambda p, we don't have any way to estimate what the small component of the real refractive index is. So for example here, for example, we might be thinking about what light is doing at 500 nanometers, that would be our lambda. Lambda p might be on the scale of 100 nanometers. So this would give us a value of about 5. So n imaginary is 5, so the refractive index is 5i. So if we have a wave in a metal and we want to know what's, what distance does, the, does that wave strength drop by a factor of 1 over e, we might say that the electric field in the metal has some magnitude and direction, familiar E naught. And let's suppose this wave is going in the Z direction, just for something precise to talk about. So there's our, our expression. Let's factor out the parts that are not decaying with space. This is a constant. And e to the minus i omega t has no space dependence. And now we've just got the k term. So we'll write that e to the i k z. Now what exactly is k in this situation? We know that k in the metal, one way to think of it, k is always n times omega over c naught, which in this case means it would be i 
times n imaginary times omega over c naught. There are other ways we can think about this. That's also equal to i times n imaginary times k itself, k naught. That would be corresponding to the k in air here. That's another way we could write it. We could also write it as i times n imaginary. And then k naught, what we mean by that is 2 pi over the air wavelength, which here we've just referred to as lambda. So all of these, all of these are options of ways that we could decide to write k. In this case, since we know n imaginary, we would, and we know the initial wavelength lambda, this bottom expression is probably the most convenient one to use. So we would then write these terms here just come on down and we have e times i times i is a negative sign and then n imaginary times 2 pi times z over lambda. Writing z over lambda this way emphasizes that the exponent is a number times a number times a ratio of two lengths. Okay, so we want to know when this exponent equals negative one, that's when the electric field has become e to the minus one of what it was at z equals zero. So we simply set that equal to one and we get an imaginary positive one. So this equals positive one. So we can now solve for z sub e, the distance z over which this equation is true. And that's just going to be lambda in air over 2 pi n i. And for example, this would be our wavelength up above, 500 nanometers times 2 pi times 5. That's 100 over about 6 or so, and that's so approximately 15 nanometers. And that, if you see an answer like that, you can sort of think you're probably on the right track. 15 nanometers, very short by the way, is a typical distance over, with, over which a visible frequency plane wave is going to attenuate significantly traveling in a metal. So that's the first sort of problem that you'd want to do. I will erase this now and solve very briefly the second type of problem. Okay, the second type of problem is going to be when n is given for a metal at some given wavelength and we have to go the other direction. We have to estimate at what wavelength the metal becomes transparent. So estimate lambda p. So we go back to what we had before. We, we are still asserting that n squared is approximately this ratio of lambda in air to lambda at the plasma frequency. And now we may be given an n, for example, we might be given that n, if we look it up, equals sort of 0 0.2 plus 5.3i at 500 nanometers. So the other approximation we're going to make is that when we square this n, yes, there's going to be a contribution from the 0 0.2, but it's approximately just n imaginary squared. So this is approximately negative n imaginary squared. So we're neglecting the fact that there is in fact any real part of the refractive index. So in that approximation you've got ni, lambda, and lambda p. There's a negatives that will cancel out and you just have to solve for lambda p. So you immediately get by equating these two with each other that lambda p is approximately equal to lambda over the magnitude of that imaginary component. And 
Again, for example, this could be 500 nanometers divided by Ni, which is 5. Obviously, that's 100. So, And if you see a number like that for an estimate of the plasma uh, wavelength, the wavelength at which a metal gets transparent, you again have probably not made a gross error in your mathematics because you should be getting some wavelength around 100 nanometers somewhere in the 70 to 150 nanometer regime for where the metal is going to be transparent.